Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Bag of Chips by Blue Orange Games. This is a two to five player pusher luck style strategy game in which players are going to gather six cards into their hand. These cards are gonna have objectives and you're going to be drawing chips or tokens from a bag. This bag is going to have random colored tokens slash potato chips placed on up to uh, the different four different locations you see here. And you're going to be trying to gather enough information to decide which of these objectives you want to keep and which you want to get rid of. In each of the different rounds you'll be doing a certain number of things. One is you'll draw a number of chips from the bag and then two is you'll be either discarding these cards or using them to either count for bonus points or negative points at the end of the round. If you score the most points at the end of the round you get two tokens and if you get the second most you get one. And your objective is to get a total of four. If you can get four tokens before anybody else you win the game. It's a pretty simple pretty straightforward game that involves pulling chips out of a bag of chips and utilizing this player aid to determine which of the more rare ones are popping out and when and how to utilize your cards in the best strategy you possibly can in this crazy little game of bowling out potato chips. To begin the game, you're first going to start by gathering all of the cards and placing them into a deck. Also, you're going to go ahead and take the player reference card, which is going to reference the different types of colored chips and how many there are, and place it somewhere within reach of all players. Next thing you'll do is you'll take the one, two, three, and four round cards and place them in the middle of the table. Take all the victory tokens and place them next to that, and all of the chip tokens will go inside this bag of chips, which is also considered to be the box for the game where you'll put everything and make sure that they're all nice and easily fit in here and shuffle them up. And then we're pretty much ready to go. Everybody's got their six cards and you'll start with the first round. Bag of Chips is a pretty simple, straightforward game, and I'll explain a full round of it. The first thing you're going to be doing is you'll have your six cards in hand and you'll look at them, and each of your cards are going to have an objective. This one here is going to say you need to have six of the specific green chips on the field, and if you do, you'll have 180 points at the end of the game. Uh, this one here says you can't have any orange chips on the field for uh, 201 points. This one here says if you have the most green uh, over the yellow on the board, you'll score 45, and rinse and repeat, so on and so forth. Uh, the last chip if it's orange you'll score points and that's basically the idea of it. Each of these cards are going to have a different objective, a different amount of victory points you can gain, and where you place them at the end of the game is what's going to matter. Uh, the first round of the game is going to be particularly simple. The first phase of this round you're going to be taking out the chips, so I'll go ahead and take out five of them, and you'll place out five random chips onto the board. These are going to be of the different colors and people should be able to see them pretty easily. After the first five pop up, every single player is going to choose two cards from their hand and they'll discard them. They'll place them face down in front of them so that the minus side is on uh, the left and the plus is on the right. On the back of the card it tells you a plus and a minus and when you put them down it should be right in front of you and easy to see to know which side is going to give you positive points and which side will give you negative and everyone will do this. Once that has been done, then you'll move on to the next phase of the game. You'll draw four more chips out of the bag here, and you'll place those four tokens, one, two, three, four, on the next card. Once you've done that, you're then going to go ahead and look back into your hand, and you should have four cards at this point. Discard one more of them, this one here, and everybody else should do the same thing. They'll look at their hand, they'll discard one card, make sure that you have your minuses on the left and your pluses on the right for your discard pile, and move on to the next phase. Third phase, you'll take out three more chips from the bag, you'll place them down on here, and then the unique twist comes in. You're going to go ahead and choose two cards in your hand and put them face down on the plus side. And you'll take one card and put it on the minus side. Mm, like that. Once you've done that, and everybody else has as well, then you're going to go ahead and do the last phase of the game. So I'll place these guys here and like here. Uh, the last phase is going to involve you flipping over your objectives and drawing two chips out of the bag. And you'll do this one at a time. You'll go one and then two. And after that, the phases are over, the round is over, and you'll see if you scored enough points. Uh, this one here is 180. If I got all the, all the green chips, all six of them, I did not. There's only four, so this would give me nothing. And this one over here says I get 201 points if I have no orange chips on the field. And there are no orange chips, so bam, 201. And as a backup, this is if the last chip is orange, I'll get 111, which <laughs> it was not. So I did not score this, so I do not get negative points. However, if it was, I would lose um, 
111 points from my 201, if that was even possible. Uh, these over here, if I have all six yellow, I would score, or all seven yellow, I get 200 points. I only got four there. And if there's an equal number of red to green, I would have scored 30. But sadly, there are three red and four green. Thusly, I'll get nothing here. So I'm down to zero, zero. And over here, this is gonna be if I have more red than green, I would get 50 points in the negative category, which there is not. Thusly, I get nothing. So this player scores nothing. This player scored 201, which means that this player is the winner and they would score two of these. Now there's also of course a variant for two players, but this is kind of just an example of how the game works. But supposing there was other players here and this player had scored the second most, they would take an extra token for victory. Then you would take all your chips and put them back into your bag and you would go ahead and discard all the cards to the discard pile and then reshuffle them up into the deck and deal out six cards to each player, which would mean that the only cards that remain are going to be, or I should say the items that will remain, are the tokens for victory. These cards will all go back into the deck here. You'll go ahead and shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Make sure you get them all. And then once again, deal out six cards uh, to each player and begin the next round of gameplay. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You're just going to be basically drawing chips from the bag, discarding cards, drawing more chips, discarding, placing two positives and one negative, and then uh, scoring points at the very last phase of the last round. If you have the most, you're the winner straightforward, simple game, which is interesting too, is I've never seen a game that actually is coming in a bag of chips style box. So yes, this is a push your luck style game. This is a pretty simple game that just involves you pulling chips from a bag and hoping to get the colors that you want based on the combinations on the objective cards that you have received. Uh, there are a variety of different colors, and of course it is recommended that you look at this player aid very thoroughly as the game goes on, because you'll gain more information to decide which of the objectives you want to be on the positive side and which to be on the negative. You always want your negative objectives to be worth zero points, and you always want your positive objectives to be worth as many points as possible, because if you get all your objectives, then you're going to lose points based on whatever one you put on the negative side. Knowing that yellow is the most valuable, or the, the least valuable, but has the most, and that the orange is the most valuable, but has the least, will probably be very important to have as information as this game goes on. Um, this is a pretty quick game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Like I said before, this is uh, high quality components. It does feel like you have a little bag of chips and something that you can pretty much bring anywhere. This is one of those backpack style games you can just put in your pocket or put in your bag and be ready to play at a moment's notice. And it has a lot more goof than I think most people would realize. Uh, there's a ton of different objectives and they all score different ways and you're going to be consistently getting different objectives, choosing different objectives and playing them down based on what the board presents itself as. <laughs> you'll be surprised as to what type of combinations will pop up. Sometimes you're not gonna get exactly what you want and other times you'll get the perfect amount and sometimes you'll get even more than you actually wanted. Sometimes it's actually good to, if you think you're gonna be able to complete three objectives in your hand throughout the round, to get rid of one of them that's probably worth the least so that way you don't end up positively scoring it as negative. So positive being that you actually were able to complete it but negative being that you had to put it on the negative side when scoring began. You never want to have uh, an objective that's going to score you points on the negative side of your cards. I also like the fact that the design is really well done in this game. You know exactly which side's going to be your negative and your positive, and flipping them over and seeing what happens is always going to be a fun experience in the game. Each of these round markers is very simple, very straightforward to understand. You'll do the top, then you'll do the bottom. This one here, draw five chips and put them on the number one, then discard two cards right in front of you, left and right being positive and negative, negative and positive. Then the next one, four and one, and then three, and then you'll place one in the negative, two in the positive, and finally you'll draw two chips. You'll draw one, and then the final last one. And why they do that is because there are cards in the objectives that will say you get bonus points for making sure that that, that, that last chip is a specific color or isn't a specific color. There's also a unique card in this game too that's gonna have a score that's pretty interesting like this one here this one says if you have more of the orange ones than the yellow ones which is really difficult because there's only three orange and seven yellow but if you do and this is on your positive side you instantly win the game irregardless of the number of rounds or points people have however 
if it scores uh, in your negative area, you will simply just lose the round. So you have to be careful as to whether or not you're going to use this and when you choose to play it and of course where. And that's what it all comes down to is making your decisions and choosing wisely based on what you think is going to pop up. And you are almost never going to be 100% correct as to what's going to pop up. This is a game of chance, it's a game of luck, and pushing your luck to make sure that you get the best possible objectives you can. Now, <laughs> the cards range in value as far as scoring. Having all six of the green ones is challenging, but it's worth 180 points. Whereas having one of each color is only worth one point. But you have to understand, if somebody gets none of their objectives complete, or multiple people, and you at least have one point, you're guaranteed to secure victory. And so sometimes even just getting one point or two points or whatever is going to be worth your while. Other times you can try and go for something that's worth a little bit of points, but not too many. Like for instance, there are four total pur purple chips, and this one says you'll get 15 points for every purple chip that pops up on the board here. Which means this can get you up to 60 points, but at least it can be worth 15 as long as you know there's at least one purple before this last one pops up here. And that's pretty much how all of them work. And it's just a nice variety of different cards that can range anywhere between the one point marker and over 200 points. I like this game. This is a lot of fun. This is one that was easy to teach, easy to learn, and quick to play. It's one of those things where you can jump in and play a game as kind of like an in-between game or something that you can take at an event or at a place that you might be not knowing how many games you can bring or have a whole lot of space for you and it'll work just perfectly fine for you. Like I said, all the quality components are very, very nice. Everything is nice and thick. All the cards work very well. It's very easy to read, very easy to understand. This is something that I can easily get on board with. It's not a game that I'm going to be playing in a huge game night with a bunch of like modern gamers that want to play something big like Viticulture or like that, but it is one of those nice kind of slice of life uh, momentary games where you can jump in, get in a good game, and you can get out. Uh, one unique thing about this game specifically, other than of course the stylization of the game being these little potato chips, is of course you're going to have uh, this bag here. And this bag is, uh, I guess it's a positive and negative. It's one of those things that's probably not going to last forever if I could imagine. Um, and it's also something that's pretty unique. I haven't seen anybody use a bag like this. I've seen other bags in games, but nothing that actually has a little sealable container like you would actually find a bag of chips to have. Um, and it works just fine for what it is. I even had this little sticker thing. I can pull this off, but it works. It, the whole thing works very well. The game is a lot of fun. I think for the most part, most of you will know if this is a game for you or not, if it's something you'd like to pick up. I would see this best placed at a checkout in the convenience center uh, near that area somewhere, like kind of like a quick grab. And I think that's where it would best shine or maybe even the, in the area where there's a bunch of magic cards and whatnot. Uh, and people could see this and then they can jump on board. And once you actually pick it up and play it, I think you'll agree that this is actually a lot of fun. This is a worthwhile purchase. It's something that I'll be keeping in my collection because I, I know that I can bring it out and play it with pretty much anybody and they'll learn very, very quickly. Bag of Chips by Blue Orange Games. I believe it came out at Gen Con. It's a solid game. It's a lot of fun, great experience. T take a look. There's a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Bag of Chips by Blue Orange Games. If you're interested in picking this game up, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and do so. There's a website, unfilteredgamer.com, with blog posts, Kickstarters, giveaways, and more. You can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PDT. And of course, if you would like, you can go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe on this video. So that subscribe bell button notification, see more of our videos, lets you notified when we put out new content, which is every day, Monday through Friday, and of course, course Sunday's live stream and Monday we come up and put the stream after editing it on to YouTube itself. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always I look forward to digging into this bag of chips with you next time.